Hey everyone, so you know how I am always on the lookout for tools that can make our coding lives a little bit easier. Well, recently I found something really interesting. It's called Try. It's a brand new IDE. And the best part, it gives you free access to both Sonnet 3.5 and the GPT-40, which is a pretty big deal if you ask me. And if you used Cursor before, Try have a similar feel to it but it have its also unique features. The real question here is, can it really actually deliver? Can it fix real world bugs, edit existing code effectively and compete with the best AI powered coding assistant and editor out there? That's what we're here to find out. Stick around because in the next few minutes, I'm going to both try to the test with some real coding challenges. Let's dive in. Try is completely brand new IDE is supported by ByteDance. And yes, ByteDance, the company that's supporting TikTok. And if you had to see all downloads, you will find it supporting Mac OS, Windows, and Linux is not supported yet. You have waitlist. When you hit download, it will automatically install it. And before you ask me, yes, this is a Visual Studio Code fork. The setup is straight and forward. It's just, it's just a bunch of click next, next, and selecting bunch of regular options that we get when you use a code editor. And after it's done, it automatically will show you the current welcome screen for try. When you hit get started, it will give you a couple of themes. You select one of them and continue. And then you import the configuration. If you want to import the configuration for, from Visual Studio Code, which what I want, it took it about one minute to do that. And after it's opened, it needed to sign in inside Try API, which I used GitHub and authenticated with my GitHub account to log in into the editor itself so I can use it. Okay, first impression from open it, the UI looks very clean. It's of course 100%. Visual Studio Code fork. If I can sync with my Visual Studio Code and pull all this extension, it means it's a Visual Studio Code fork. It have the client, the raw code, the augment code, which I use right now only two of this extension. I have a lot like continue on Cobalt Arena, Code GBT. First of all, I noticed that it's automatically selecting Claudia 3.5 Sonnet model and the GPT-40 existing as a second option. I have searched the entire settings, which you can access it from files, reference settings, and honestly, I can't find anything connecting it to other models. For example, if I wanna connect to the DeepSeq R1 or the DeepSeq version 3, I can't do that. For some reason, I only have to use the Sonnet 3.5 or the GPT-40 only. Also, the profiles doesn't have a lot of options, it only have the context settings, basically the keyboard shortcut, all the stuff, and you can create multiple new profiles. By clicking new profile, I think you can move certain extension and make it the default if you want. The chat box have two different modes. The first one is chat. It's your typical coding assistant you talk to to get code and snap it and fix error. And the second one called builder. Builder, it seems in its beta, it's basically easily build a project from the scratch. And in the builder mode, you change it to the code file will automatically save. Basically, it's like bold.new. You will talk to it at the beginning and tell it, I want to build this kind of project. And it go ahead and start building this project for you. I'm going to focus on the chat mode to see is it good or not. And I'm going to start with a real issue that I have inside this page logic. When I was building it in the raw code, I forget to create a pagination inside it. So I'm going to implement imagination. This is the prompt that I have right now. And it's a very simple inside this page. I want to add the logic for imagination for this Redux file. I give it the Redux uh, file slice. And this is the controller for it. Also, I give it the controller. I notice it doesn't use at like most of the coding assistant that I have used using at sign, but it used the hashtag. And then you have to select one of this option. For example, if you want to add file, you select file, hit enter. And then you write the name of the file that you want, which is kind of slightly weird, but the UI of it is extremely clean. And you can also, when you select, for example, this page, you can click on the page and you go there and you make sure that this is the page that you want to work with. And also I have noticed that when you select 
the hashtag you select the file if you have anything opened or already have been opened before you can automatically select it from this list which is very good and right now i'm gonna hit enter and see how it will work okay the result is done but it seems like it did something wrong here for some reason, instead of working on the candidate page, it's working on the home page and it modified the candidate section, which I don't want to do that. So I'm going to start from new. Basically, I'm going to create a new chat by clicking this button and I once more try again. But instead of leaving the home page open, I'm going to close it. Maybe this is the issue. And instead of using the candidate page, I'm going to use the client logic of it. For the second attempt, it seemed like it realized it need to work on this file, the candidate client.gsx. And the logic it seemed correct because it's creating imagination logic as I can see the skip, the limitation, the page, where when to skip and when to limit. And it check on the current links. But yeah, I will hit accept and I hopefully it work apply. By clicking this button, it should be applying the code. Okay, applying current file. It seemed like it's trying to do that. And right now you can hit accept by alt and y to select which one that you want to accept alt and no basically alt and yes and build on alt and no for each file or basically accept all by hitting ctrl enter like augment and i will hit yes and trying to read each one of them deleted this part but it replaced it with this one i will hit enter and it seemed like it's done all right, let's now test it. It seems it's working because when I change from previous to next, it's working. But the button UI is extremely ugly. It's not like the rest of the UI that I have in my project. And it's clearly like needs some sort of loading here, changing from page one to page two. But this can be done. To improve the UI, I will ask it to improve the UI for the next and the previous buttons. Use the React icon for it. And use the loading spinner component. I have this loading spinner for it already existing. When it loads a new data and hit enter. Okay, it's improved the UI slightly, but I still don't like it. I want to work with the dark seam and the light seam that I have. And yeah, it added the react button and slightly a new hover animation. This is good also. So I'm gonna go back once more and add this kind of stuff. Okay, for the UI, it fixed the button style. It actually improved it, but right now I feel I have this clunky effect. And instead of just loading, and instead of skeleton loading, I kind of have this kind of weird animation that show up, will go up and down, and I don't like it. For some reason, I don't feel like it's using the Sonnet 3.5 to its fullest capability. I feel like it's like there is something holding it back because usually Sonnet is extremely intelligent. When I give it a prompt, it figure out what I want easily i don't have to describe every single detail that's what make it the best coding assistant model out there but this one is not like the one that i use in raw code or client or even augment this one is weird it's like uh, have some sort of limitation on it funny thing that while i was coding i noticed there is a restart for the update and there is a brand new update just today it improved multiple common issues. Okay, that's mean like it's a very active in terms of fixing issues, add drag and drop, enhance interaction experience and workflow and support 64 bit version of Windows, which is very weird to not to be supported from the start. Most of the developer already use this kind of version of Windows. But yeah, let's go back and see if it improved for real. Okay, something new just happened. When I updated the editor, it seemed like when you select a new file, there is some sort of tree to show you where exactly this file is. And you can see it here on the left. This is really cool. And I, if I wrote like, for example, the candidate client, it show me it's under the candidates folder under the app. And I hit select, I hit enter once more. Okay, it seemed like it fixed the last issue that I have with the button, but right now I can't click on the previous. If it's, there is nothing to go back there. And right now I can click on next and it doesn't do this weird go up and go down very fast. And I found also another cool feature inside it. When you select snippet of code inside it, you can either you hit edit, control I, or add to chat, control U. Control I will give you this pop-up that is like cursor. I feel like this editor is 
copying a lot of stuff from cursor so far and in order to close it you can hit escape if you want to add it to chat you can just hit ctrl u and it automatically will be added to the chat the file will be added and the line from 23 to 43 and honestly i don't want to do that so i will hit delete I really like this kind of stuff because you can go to the file, for example, the candidate client, which I will have to modify once more, hit Control U, and it will automatically add everything for this file inside this chat. I have this issue in my search for candidate inside the database. I'm using multiple queries to search for one thing. Honestly, I don't like this at all, for especially when I'm searching using skills or title. It get confused and to fix this, I'm going to combine title and skills under keyword, and this keyword will be sent from the front end the API to the back end. And basically, this is what I requested in the prompt, and I explained it and I gave it the controller, the slice for Redux, and the logic UI for it. And hopefully, it can fix it, but I don't know. I feel like it can't do that for some reason, but I will hit send anyway. Okay, boys, I take it back. It managed to do this easily. Like somehow um, the new update fixed the hallucination that I got at the beginning. And to be honest, this is really good. Like I am very unlucky sometimes when I do coding assistant videos, like the last one, everyone called it a clickbait. Even if I show them that this was unlimited. But my luck that the company changed the entire free plan from unlimited to 3,000 chat per month. For some reason, the team pushed a very good update, fixed the issue that I had in the beginning of the video. So it's, it's a very weird experience that I had, but so far it fixed the issue. I can show you in the UI right now. I can search using keywords. For example, I'm going to search for talent developer. I have an account, I think. Yeah, it's automatically get that search very quick. Maybe if I search for something in Arabic, automatically get it. And I can see the keyword is working over there. No title and skills. This is really cool. Let's do one more fix, which is very simple in the back end. I want to add the keyword when I search for jobs to be added also to the category of the job. The prompt is extremely simple. Use the keyword for searching job categories. Also, this is the schema. I give it the Prisma schema that I have. And this is the controller logic, which I'm currently standing at. And I notice also when you hit hashtag, file the first one usually is the one that you are open like working on and this is really nice it's kind of a shortcut and i noticed something also really cool i don't know how i didn't notice the web view the web view show you the current project that you're working inside your editor that's insane like this is really cool because that will save you time switching from basically if you have one screen you, you don't have to switch from your browser to your editor to your browser to your editor it's like slightly faster right now and for for me i have two screens one half the one half the browser is open the other one half the editor but not everyone have this two screen setup so it seems like the fix that i did is not working yet i think i know why it's not working so i will go to files which is kind of weird to see the web development ui inside your editor i'm gonna take time to use to this and search for the component that it's handling this which is over here. And the funny thing that the only issue that I have is that I have S and this keyword doesn't have S in it. So if I click, if I removed it and hit save and went to the web view, I'm pretty sure it will work. Ta-da, and it's fixed. That's very weird. That's like, that shows you sometimes that even AI miss silly things like this. Okay, I have to give you an honest opinion right now about the whole editor. This editor, at the start, it felt slightly clunky but i lucky that i got the update over there and to be honest the whole thing is really cool like the whole the whole web the view and switching to controller inside your web view talking to the chat and so far I, I feel like it's it's for free i think it's for free okay i did some digging i found out how this entire ide is for free which is uh kind of weird First of all, the company behind TikTok ByteDance is the powerhouse behind this IDE. That makes sense right now because no one can give you Cloud 3.5 and GPT-4.0 for free. And the IDE itself is for free. You don't have to buy anything, subscription or a free trial 
nothing, everything. So, so as by the time that I'm making this video, it's so far is for free, 100%. In case of something change, but the bike dance is concerning because the minute that I think about TikTok, I know there some sort of privacy concern will be showing up. And honestly, yes, it's written here inside this kind of vlog. I will leave the link for it in the description. It's coming from Zim, the tri try ID. About there is some sort of security and trust issue. The people think this thing will gonna steal my code and give it to China. And I am worried about the security of my code. There is some sort of debate, like saying how this kind of free and uh, how it's kind of sus as some comments saying and suggest that some suspect that the platform may monetizing data or adopt other less transparent practice. That could be happening. That could be happening. I don't see any answer or detailed response about this point. All I see that some people saying that some sort of security trust. And uh, yeah, I think, yeah, there is might be some sort of coding getting taken from your IDE okay, to China. And to be honest, my opinion about it, if it's for free and your code, if you're coding something that is not that important, it doesn't matter. But if your code is like a high in the project and it's complicated and if you're working for a government or a very high end agency, I will start to get worried. This is like for your free kind of side project to use something that is not important if it have been locked at. And there is also this blog that I found from Geeky Gadgets. It's talking about the same thing about the entire how it's for free and it's powered by ByteDance and it gives you access to GBT 4O and Cloud 3.5 Sonnet for free. And the feature includes uh, all the stuff that we have seen, but there is some sort of limitation, lack of web access to external documentation. The documentation of them are very basic. When you go to the documentation, that's it. Like there is nothing uh, with a lot of details inside it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're gonna improve it with time. So far, I don't see something heavily negative about it, except that it take your code. And honestly, I think it stick your code when you hit apply for changing the code. I feel like there is the loading that it show up for applying the code inside your file. It's slightly longer than it should be. And I don't know why it's loading. It's already have the file sent to Claudia. And it should be able to know which line it should change. I have this theory about this editor. When exactly take your code? When you ask it for the something that you want to fix or a code snippet and it come back and you hit apply, you notice there is some sort of loading that is happening. I don't know if this when you take your code or not, but I think yes. Because the code that is coming back, if you read it and validate it and accept it, it means that it's good code. So it means that this code is high quality. When you accept it and say yes, I think this win the time that the code is being taken to try AI. And that's it for today's video. If you found this video distracting your time and providing you with valuable information, please hit the like and subscribe button. And in the description of this video, I'm gonna leave a link for another video that you might want to see. It's for code augment and it's an amazing extension. Yeah, it's take your data if you're using for free, but if you paid for it, you get unlimited access for it. And someone in my comments actually helped me he found this coding extension. And to be honest, I couldn't find his comment in the last video and he got angry about it. And for that, I am sorry, my friend. Yeah, he's probably right now not watching this video, but believe it or not, sometimes YouTube deletes some comments in my YouTube section and I don't know why, but this guy helped me to find the code extension that I used in the last video. And uh, for that, thank you. I appreciate it. And any one of you have any recommendation for coding extension or a coding editor, please let me know down below so I can take a look at it. I might learn something new or find something very cool and good to use. So for that, thank you guys for watching and see you in the coming video.